now. So welcome everybody to this talk, just something that's I'm just sharing from what's come through me, what I've experienced, what my mind has entered into, which is available to all of us. So today I'm guided to talk about time, the past, present and future and just sort of weave it into a talk. I'm just going to let go and let whatever's to be said or spoken and really sort of surrender to not knowing. So I've just been guided to, initially I was guided to this part of the course called Finding the Present, Chapter 13. Uh, chapter 13, Section 6 in the FIP version. I'll be reading from this version today. It's just a bit easier to read from because it's a sort of a smaller book for me to hold and move around on my desk and interestingly enough I got guided to read a prayer at the start as I was sitting here in the last 15 minutes before before joining I was like okay I'll read a prayer from the um the lessons from the back of the book so after lesson two or from lesson 220 onwards I sort of see them as as just prayers um, and so I sort of read them quite a bit when I start groups <clears throat> and um, I just opened I just opened the book and I looked down and there was the perfect lesson for today so <laughs> really see how this lesson that I'm reading will tie in with the teachings that I'll bring through. So these, the, these things that I'm sharing today are things that I've my mind has realised. So there's sort of no guessing or no just reading it and wondering what it is. It's sort of a way that I can maybe express, express it more in layman's terms. I mean, the course is pristine in its terms, but I'm not saying I'm improving on it at all. I'm just saying that I'm guided to share um, something that's in the way I'm sharing. And I'm so I might I read from the text and just sh share a little bit about it. So, but remember the the course, the course's teachings and the words are the divine words. They are always to go back to them as your pure teachings. So teachers like myself can help and add and assist and maybe point to you know point you in a way, and we're all doing that. But these, just to remember that these, you can't go past this teaching. This is the foundation of our, our path to awakening. So this is lesson 308. This instant is the only time there is. Let's just take a, a few minutes to really drop a few seconds actually just drop and if you want to close your eyes and just drop drop into a bit more quietness I have conceived of time in such a way that I defeat my aim if I elect to reach past time to timelessness, I must change my perception of what time is for. Time's purpose cannot be to keep the past and future 
one. The only interval in which I can be saved from time is now. For in this instant has forgiveness come to set me free. The birth of Christ is now without a past or future. He has come to give his present blessing to the world, restoring it to timelessness and love. And love is ever present here and now. Thanks for this instant, Father. It is now I am redeemed. This instant is the time you have appointed for your son's release and for salvation of the world in him. So let's just say a prayer that we're just going to hand over all our perceptions, all our ideas about time and just be open to having a different view come into our mind. So Holy Spirit, Jesus, you be in charge of what I get out of this reading or what I get out after this group or as I go through from it. All I do now is just open up and say I'm willing to have my perception changed. I'm just willing to just sit here and say I don't know I don't know anything because I'd be using the past to know. So I really need to say I really don't know anything and free myself, free my mind up so something new can come in to help me. So we've said the prayer. We've allowed ourselves to just be open, just feel yourself open. It doesn't matter how it comes in or what's used. Our guide in our mind is in charge. We've put them in charge and all we that's all we need to do is just say, be you in charge. Here I am. I'm turning up at this group. I'm listening to these words. And I'm just opening myself up just to say, you teach me. So I just come willing and ready to learn. Not from Kate, but from an infinite wisdom beyond, beyond any of us as personal identities. So these words in the course are written from the infinite wisdom. Finding the present. To perceive truly is to be aware of all reality through the awareness of your own. And so we are going to have this awareness of our own. It's, it's going to be, we are, we're going to have some awareness of it. You're not going to go to a void or a darkness or a black, blackness. And even the words emptiness and nothingness can sometimes frighten us because we think, what, is it just going to be nothing or empty? But it's, it's going to be the richness and the vibrancy and the beautiful holiness and vastness of God's love that we come to. But it's empty 
of everything we've ever felt or thought before. So it's empty of the past and future thoughts. So to perceive truly is really, we come here when we're in the world, we get another perception. This other perception is, is like um, seeing God in everything because God is in our mind. So to perceive truly is to perceive God in everything and Christ in our brother. That's our true perception. So that's what he's asking us to come to have that true perception or to perceive truly is to be aware of all reality through the awareness of your own. So we are going to have this awareness. It's going to be something we, not as personal identities, but we, we're going to have the experience of this love, of this Christ mind, of this infinite vast experience of God's love. But for this, in other words, but for this awareness of to perceive truly, no illusions can rise to meet your sight. So no illusions arising to meet our sight. It's not, it's, it's not um, that um, you won't see things with your eyes. It means when he uses the word sight, he means perception. So when the eyes just look at stuff, they're just a looking device. The, the mind is the perceiver. So there's looking and seeing. So, you know, you look around, you see shapes and images and shadows and different, different things. Like, but what happens is this, he uses the word sight in, in, um, in conjunction with the word perceive. So perception, if when we read the word sight, we've really got to read it as perception interpretation, meaning I'm putting on everything. So for this, no illusions can rise to meet your sight. For reality leaves no room for any error. So just to, just to clarify this a little bit about perception, is that while we're here, we, we are going to see an image of the world. We're going to see flowers and trees and buildings. But when we're going to see all that differently, it's, it's going to be let go. We're going to see God in everything. So it, we're still going to see the image, but the whole understanding of what the image is, is, is going to change for us in our mind. But in, but in heaven, there is no perception. There's no even seeing an image, you could say. But while we're here, so the sort of our, that's why he calls it the happy dream. So the meaning of the images is going to change. So that's why he's trying to, he's working with our thoughts because our thoughts create the meaning of what we see. And so um, like a little baby doesn't know the meaning of any images he's taught. Or he or she is taught. Um, so we have to become like little children and not know because he says, you know, you have given all the meaning. And as we unwind, the values and the, the images become just like a, what he calls sort of like a dream. It's just seen as, um, I mean, the mind is the image maker. But you don't have to try to get rid of the images. What he's asking us to do is to change our mind about the images. And then the images just don't really concern ourselves. We don't really have to concern ourselves with the images. So if you follow the, the lessons of the course, they'll take you through the whole undoing. And then you'll have your personal guide with you to help you undo sort of specifics about your life. So, um, so it's important to sort of remember that while, so when you're here in the dream, as you're waking up, 
there's sort of this dropping away. So the, the first thing is to have your per perception changed of everything. So you start to, you work with your guide and you work with the course's lessons and the text and you start to um, see that you have given everything the meaning it has. It doesn't, nothing actually has a meaning. It's like, it's just, a, you know, a color and a shape and a, and a word is just a noise out of a mouth. Um, you know, if you hear someone speaking in a language you don't understand, all you hear is noise. So that's really what we're hearing and our mind has given it a meaning. And the images here don't have any meaning at all. Bodies don't have meanings. So we start to look within, we have to sort of take responsibility for everything that we have projected onto the images. And then the last thing is that the images start to um, not become very relevant to us and will start to sort of fade or not be, um, uh, they don't matter as much. And then, but in, when we're taken into God's mind, there are no images, there are no bodies, there are no, um, there's no separation, there's no bodies. We're going back to at the place we never met. But we will return when we have those beautiful sort of revelatory or mystical experiences, we will come back to this world reluctantly. <laughs> and he's asking us to teach others um, through our experiences that we've had. He's asking us to share um, that with, with others as a way of what we're really teaching our brother is he is the complete guiltless son of God. So we are going to see that in every character, the complete guiltlessness, because we can't come to God holding a grievance against one character here. If we hold one grievance, we, we will not enter into that mind of God that we so want. So our motivation is to free ourselves of everything that's holding us uh, in separation. The ego part of our mind is constantly trying to bring a grievance in or a fear. <clears throat> so this is the mind training that we have to go through. We have to be willing to say, I have a grievance against this particular person we think they're a person but they're really just an image we have projected everything onto them every single thing that we think they're doing or saying or meaning or whatever they're doing this to us it's in our mind that you've got to see that that is all in your mind it's nowhere else without a thought about it you couldn't have a grievance it's our thoughts and beliefs that he works with to undo. And if you can, even sickness and everything, if you can move it all to, it's my thoughts, my grievances, my beliefs, my concepts, my ideas about things, whatever you, whatever works, whatever idea, they're all really meaning the same thing. So forgiveness is the act of taking responsibility for everything you're upset about everything that's not of peace and love and happiness your job is just to really say okay this is this is um what's upsetting me now i need it i need another perception to be at peace the goal of the course is to be peaceful but really it's got um we come to god with empty hands we receive the peace and then we teach peace we become a teacher of peace we become a teacher of God. We talk about what we've done and how we've done it. Just that's all I can do here is just talk about how I took 100% responsibility for all the beliefs and thoughts and ideas and grievances and resentments and guilt and sin, all the beliefs, they're all beliefs, and just had them gently changed by the guide in my mind. And really that's it. That's our one function. The function is your purpose in life. So my one function is to forgive. 
<clears throat> so when no illusions arise to meet your sight, in other words, no illusions arise in your mind to give a meaning to whatever you're seeing here. Reality no leaves no room for any error. So there's reality. When you see reality, which is all, everything is God, everyone is Christ, everything is love, there's no room for any error. In that state of mind, there's no error. There's just no error in your mind. <coughs> this means that you perceive a brother only as you see him now. So in that he's talking about the awakened mind, the mind that has no error. So in that mind, this means when you're seeing clearly that you perceive a brother only as you mm -hmm. see him now. In other words, he's going to go on. His past has no reality in the present, so you cannot see it. Your past reactions to him are also not there. And if it is to them that you react, you see but an image of him that you made and cherish instead of him. So he's telling us we are responsible for every perception. When he says an image of him that you made, he's talking about the meaning you've put on, the, all the thoughts that you're saying, this person is like this. You are doing this. Your mind is creating and making the meaning of this person, this brother. They're, that you are cherishing because you want him to be guilty or you want him, you might actually perceive someone in awe, like a teacher or someone and you give them awe. This is the wrong thing, to, the wrong image and thing to cherish as well. This will keep you stuck as well as believing they're guilty or bad or um doing the wrong thing or something that you perceive about your brother, including putting them on a pedestal and revering them yes. is the same mistake. So do not give your brother, do not put any brother in awe, even Jesus. Jesus says, do not put me in awe because then you'll believe that you can't have the same mind as them. So he says our only uh, response to our brother is appreciation. So during this talk, you can have a feeling of appreciation for me, a feeling of pre appreciation for all the other brothers here, but it's equal appreciation. They were all doing this together to come home, to let go of the world and come back within our minds into the mind of love where we've always been and never left. So they're the same mistake and don't try not to fall for either. We, we really, we do fall for them and they're going to be let go of. In your questioning of illusions, so we need to question our illusions, like what meaning have I given this person? What meaning have I given that house, that car, that job, that food, that hair, that teacher, that book, that whatever? What meaning? Questioning, constantly questioning all the illusions. Why? What, what am I? What am? What am I seeing in my brother? Why am I seeing this? Ask yourself it is, if it is really sane to perceive what was as now. So if you're coming to any brother and you're perceiving his past in him, which we all do, <laughs> um, he's, he's asking us, is it sane 
to to perceive the the past in your brother every time you meet your brother and our brother is just any character here in the dream with us if you remember the past as you look upon your brother you will be unable to perceive the reality that is now so we have two choices when we meet our brother if we're seeing his past the reality his christ self is obscure to us we're looking at the past and we're just that's why when two people look at the same character they've both got a different past that's why you know if you're with someone they say oh i love that person oh i don't like him why because you're both living in a different meaning the thoughts the beliefs you have about that person and you live in it because remember nothing leaves your mind so when you live in those thoughts you're you're basically drinking toxic thoughts each time you project guilt onto your brother you're living in that guilt your brother isn't he might be free of it but if you see if you try if you say that person's guilty they're wrong they did this they did that you know whatever words you use to condemn your brother you get the experience of that no one else you can really see these, these things that um you know we're we're talking about they this is sort of the way i started to realize that you know he he says you hold a sword above your own head and i think there's other teachings that say you're the one that's drinking the the poison when you hold a resentment or a grievance against someone so if you want the peace of god you have to let go of your past the past that you are holding on to about your brother the way to be free is to see him as he is now and obviously jesus is going to um bring in how we should be looking on upon our brother so he's guiding us to how to be free it's up to us to do this he's not going to force us he's not going to come into our mind and say hey you know i'm going to take this past that you've projected onto this character here he wants us to decide it because he wants us to see the power of our mind he's not going to diminish the power that we have it, because we have the power we have the christ mind power and that is just the power of love because to be in the christ mind means you love everyone equally because you see the divinity of all you're not looking at bodies you're seeing past them and he's asking us to do this this is the way he brings us home and it can only be in the present moment that we perceive someone's true self because why why is it in the only only in the present moment because there is only the present we start to see even you looking at the screen now or just sitting wherever you are you're always in the present moment you're not back yesterday in saturday and you're not into well we're in monday but you're not into the following day you're always here you're always in there's a present moment that's always here that you can't you can never be free of the present moment it's always now and that's the only time that you can perceive your brother truly and if you shift into this um, true perception you'll always see him that way it will become what jesus says is knowledge knowledge of your brother that he is not his body but the beautiful holy christ and you won't see anything else he's asking us to practice this until it becomes it shifts into a knowledge as everything else about our brother is let go so we're really asked to if we want the peace of god we have to be willing to let go of these past ideas about our brother they are keeping us in hell no one else is in hell except us 
the brother that we think did something to us, they might be awakened and living in the joy. They've seen the errors of their ways and forgiven themselves and let go and said, oops, I just did something wrong because I thought I was a body and I thought I needed to get something from somewhere else for my happiness. Now, we've all done that. But if we can understand that this is a dream where we're reaching and grabbing and trying to get things, we're trying to grab hold of stuff, in, but it's a dream. It never happened. A dream disappears when you see. So you don't have to feel guilty about anything you've ever done because it's happened in a dream. You never left God's mind. You are guiltless. You've just, your mind's just wandered into a dream. Like you wander into a dream at night and you might have killed somebody or done something. And then you wake up and you say, that never happened. This is the same aspect. Nothing has ever happened here, but it seems like it has. And that's why we have to say, I was in a dream where I may have hurt someone or said something unkind. But I have to see that I am innocent and my brother is innocent too. He's under the same spell I'm under. So we wake up together. We have the same ego mind. There is no, um, if you can undo all these ideas about mental illness and just say to yourself, it's ego and we all have it. We're all here as egos and we're all seeking from our brothers or from something from the world. We're just lost. We're just like little children wandering around saying, you know, where's my happiness? I've lost, I've lost it. And here's Jesus in a book pointing us back to the to where our true home is. And he's giving us a pathway. He's asking us to let go of past and future and come into the present and to see that there's only the present. But part of this present is contains timelessness. So in the present, if you're in the present, which is always now, this present moment is not a thing in time. It's outside time and space, this present moment, because you'll start, you might start to see it's always now. And once you get that, you're on your way. If you can just really feel into that it's always now, look around you and just notice. Just there's just some realization that I can't be anywhere but now. I'm always here and now. Now, if I never had a thought about the past or never had a thought about the future, I'd just be here. And it'd be so quiet. So how, how we stabilize in that is that whenever the past comes up into our mind, which is the ego, we decide against holding on to that. Now, if you feel overwhelmed with it, you feel that you can't let go of it really quickly, you do what I call long forgiveness, which is Holy Spirit, help me, I give this over to you, help me perceive it differently. And some other, something else will come in to show you your, the holiness of your brother or some correction of some sort into your mind. It will correct your perception about what, you, what you're overwhelmed with. The quick forgiveness is just noticing if you can sort of be in that witnesser and see the thought, you can just say, oh, there's a thought of the past, I let it go. Now you'll probably start as you practice with the course you might start to notice that you can start doing what I call quick forgiveness instant forgiveness and then other times you might need to do a longer process because you sort of it's like the thoughts have come in and anchored and taken the seeds taken taken into your mind and the roots have grown and you have to have it pulled out it doesn't matter which one you do it, it, there's no better or worse forgiveness it's just as long as you're willing to do it because each time you're willing to 
have your perception changed about anyone or anything, the world, whatever. You've done forgiveness and that's what Jesus is asking us to do. So in your questioning of illusions, ask yourself if it is really saying to perceive what was as now. So am I ever going to see my brother as he truly is if I keep bringing the past in and covering it over? It's really like the ego is like this big veil. I can't see my holy brother because I'm living in this, oh, she does this, she talks too much, she whines on about this, she's going to go back into this story, you know, I can't stand it, you know, this is all our past, right? They talk to, or they don't talk enough, oh, here's this character, doesn't talk enough, you know, what is talking too much and not talking enough? They're all just meanings we give to sounds out of mouths, out of characters, right? My brother doesn't need to say anything for us to know him as the Christ. He's got nothing. Like, how could you be upset by the sounds out of mouth or no sounds out of mouth? It's got to be. That's why we have to take responsibility for every tiny meaning we give something. Even the meaning, oh, I don't like going around and seeing this person. You know, they fall asleep or they talk too much or they, whatever, whatever you're um perceiving as a aspect that stops you from perceiving the true reality of your brother has to be let go of oh look at the meaning i'm making of words of talking or not talking or you know you might not like their clothes or their hair or their something or other or the way they live or where they live or you know, it's just it's a whole production of past thoughts that the only way we can be free of them is we have to take responsibility. Conflict cannot be um, changed unless we see it and ask for a correction. This conflict will continue. You'll start to notice that maybe you've had this particular conflict with different characters. And it seems to you very natural to have this past conflict that it is conflict. And who wants conflict when you can have the peace of God? And if you knew that it was just a correction by the Holy Spirit or Jesus, then you can be free of it. So you consider it natural to use your past experience as the reference point from which to judge the present. Yet this is unnatural because it is delusional. When you have learned to look on everyone with no reference at all to the past, either his or yours as you perceived it, you will be able to learn from what you see now. For the past can cast no shadow to darken the present unless you are afraid of light. And only if you are afraid of light would you choose to bring darkness with you and by holding it in your mind, see it as a dark cloud that shrouds your brother and conceals the reality from your sight. So I was saying a veil before, but really you like putting a dark cloud around them. Jesus is saying here. Now, am I afraid of light? Because he says that's the only reason you want to put darkness around your brother am I afraid of light am I afraid of light I mean we have to be really honest don't we this is sort of like we have to stop and think when we come across these sentences in the course we can't just zoom through them and say oh look I've I can tick the box that I've read this section and close it up and go and watch Netflix you know <laughs> it's like oh I've done my reading for today no am I afraid of light am I afraid to have a mind full of light and love 
And, you know, if you are, be honest. If And that's really, you know, a lot of, it's really good. I think we've done this a little bit in our groups before where we've said, you know, we're afraid to awaken because the ego has a story like, oh, you'll be, you'll be doing those Zoom groups all day and there'll be no rest. And, you know, wow, you know, because remember the ego says to awaken will be chaos, right? So just remember what chaos is the ego projecting that if I'm the light, what if it, what, what's the sacrifice of seeing my brother's innocence? If you can realize that forgiveness is a gift to yourself, you're gifting peace of mind to yourself by seeing your brother's innocence. It's only a gift to me. I'm the only one that's going to get the experience of this beautiful joy and happiness by looking at my brother as he truly is. And then some, you know, someone else might be helped by that. But the main thing is he wants us to awaken to it first. He wants us, so I get it. Wow, I get the peace of God by doing this. So why am I afraid of it? You know, oh, have I ever, have I ever really experienced happiness by constantly seeing the past in my brother? Every time I meet this character, can you see all the characters? Maybe your mum, your dad, your brothers, sisters, children, co-workers, friends. Have a look at all the different pasts that you've got over them. There's a little bit of difference, but there's always judgment and comparisons. That's what the ego does. Judges and compares. Judges you and compares you, judges them, they're guilty. Oh, no, they're not guilty today. Oh, they're this wonderful thing. Oh, no, they're guilty. <laughs> oh, no, they're on a pedestal. No, no, they're guilty. <laughs> um, I mean, it's good that we laugh, right? We have to laugh at what the ego does. It's like, make up your mind. Are they guilty or are they on the pedestal? <laughs> The ego says, I've got to get something from them. You know, Jesus says, they hide. The ego says, there's a pearl in them, if I can just get it. Well, actually, there is a pearl. It's the Christ in them, I've got to say. But um, uh, so, so he says, this darkness is in you, right? So the darkness that I shroud my brother in with his past is in me. Well, it has to be in me because there's nothing outside me, right? <laughs> my brother's in my mind and the darkness that I shroud him in is in my mind. It has to be. The past is nowhere else except in my mind because if I had no thought of it, it wouldn't be in my mind, right? Everything's in my mind because everything's my thoughts and my beliefs and <laughs> they bring in the, the experience, right? So I have to see that everything is, every perception, every meaning I've given everything is in my mind. So, um, so this darkness is in me. This, the past is in me. His, my brother's past is in my mind and nowhere else. The Christ as revealed to you now has no past. For he is changeless. And in his changelessness lies your release. Now, this is why that Christ blessing was given to me um, by Jesus, because it is a way to bless your brother and release your own mind. So remember, everything that I'm seeing in my brother, the whole past, is the story that I'm hanging on to. And we all do that. The ego is a big story maker. It is an image maker. It is the um, meaning. It's the un. It's its thought system. You remember, the ego is like a big bubble of thoughts, and they're all got at their base: separation, guilt, fear, blame, um, sin. So, it's sort of. I, I think I was saying last week that you know, if you can see that you because um, the last week's talk was about I only see the past. So this is sort of part of this particular talk because it's all about going into the past. So it's like we 
we we always sort through the past so sometimes we might meet someone new and start to notice how when you meet them say you meet someone walking along or in a you know you might be walking your dog and you meet someone they come up they start talking to you out of the blue shops or somewhere where maybe out at a function you meet someone new just watch your mind trying to gather information from the past to put on to this person oh they're like this oh yeah that they're like that and just start to watch how you won't want to see his true innocent self without anything and that's what jesus says when he says you consider it natural to use your past because you want to know you want to like what's this brother like you know what's you want to have an opinion or an idea about him so you say oh okay he likes this and you ask him about himself and what he likes to do and how he is and then you all the judgments flood in so if you were standing beside someone else talking to someone new you'll come away you'll have completely different opinions about him why because you've got you've got a different past but the past is always the same it'll be someone might put him on a pedestal <laughs> and someone might say oh i can't stand that guy or that woman she's like this she's like that I remember when I met someone and um, they had a real resistance to anyone smoking or blowing smoke or having smoke in a small confined area and I found out later that their mother smoked and that when they would be driving somewhere the windows would be up she'd smoke in the car and he felt overwhelmed by the smoke so anyone that smoked he'd sort of have a little bit of a of a, a past about you see so we're only ever seeing our past so to go back to that you could go back to that moment where you're sitting in the car with your mother smoking and just say holy spirit undo this for me and you could and he could say you do not need to have fresh air without smoke to be my child you are beyond um beyond anything in this world to be your true self your true self doesn't need fresh air to be safe so it undoes it so it undoes the grievance the grievance could be that my mum didn't consider me I was unfairly treated I was subjected to too much cigarette smoke in the car blah 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 so that past is undone now in the present you go back to the present because you want to uncover all the grievances all the upsets or every you'll know what's in your past because you'll meet someone they'll have a cigarette in their mouth or you'll be in a small place and you'll be like that person's really annoying they shouldn't be smoking so you say okay I've got I've got something from my past about cigarette smoking and I need it healed so Jesus says to get specific because he's going to heal the specifics but then they'll get generalized so this is the way we do it we just notice whenever we put a meaning oh I feel suffocated right well, I must have something in my past so let's go back let's let's let it go and as you might go back to the car scene where you're you're upset with your mother you're feeling she didn't consider you she subjected it to you she, you were unfairly treated by the cigarette smoke and her run so she, so you might so how it gets undone is you might say that um the holy spirit's going to say she wasn't aware that you're upset and also it takes away that idea of you you needing something needing fresh air to feel safe so he undoes that and he brings you closer to your true self by saying who you are needs nothing from this world you're beyond this world so he constantly brings in um, the presence or the idea of your true self when he corrects you and then he says you need to let go of this grievance of your mother and see only her holiness so in that's how it all gets undone it gets the the grievance gets undone so it makes so once the grievance is cleared he then gets you to see the character that you've got the grievance with as they truly are and you only have to do it really with one character and everything gets awakened as to who everyone is um and I would suggest that you do it with the one that you have the most grievances with 
there might be maybe one or two or three because uh, that's where once you're free of all that so the holy spirit corrects your perception um, about it by using the teachings of the course he uses them to bring you free so therefore you're free of the past so therefore you can walk into a room full of cigarette smoke and not even notice it and someone else might say oh there's a lot of smoke in here and you go oh I didn't even notice it right because the past isn't there and you're just aware of all the price there you say oh wow how great is it to be with you guys right so your mind's open and free and then someone that's got a grievance about the cigarettes might say don't aren't you upset by all this cigarette smoke no no it doesn't bother me at all no I don't even notice it and you're like wow so you already given another perception so the Holy Spirit's working with them and these are little these are little ways little um, um, things of how it works um, so the Christ is revealed to you now has no past for he is changeless and in his changelessness lies your release so as we this this little um practical application of the mother smoking in the car um if you can have a release from that you've let go of the past and then you're able to see the christ in your mother um in that i get the release me as the child gets the release me not me as kate but my mind gets release so what we have to really start to see is this is why we want to do this work why we want to go back to the past and have everything changed because they're things that we're carrying in our mind that need to be released and changed and we get the release it's a gift to us we're doing this for us for, our, for us to have the peace of God so once I realized this on my journey I thought right bring up everything I want everything done right let me have a look at everything in the past like I was just like working 24 7 right or who else have I got a grievance with what's coming up today show me where I'm holding anything I want to just get rid of it be free of it I just want to be able to walk around and be not triggered by anything I want to have a happy day every day so this is what he wants us to do he wants us to live in this Christ mind he says God is happiness and love so when I'm in the happiness and love I'm in God I've got this God loves experience because the past is gone so it's a gift to ourselves it's always for us we're doing this for ourselves so we can have this peace of God and share it and teach it you're not going to come to a teacher and be taught if they're grumbling and irritable and you want you want you want someone that is emulating peace like Jesus was people were attracted to him because he just had a light in him so we want to be that light so we first of all we have to have all these this past undone um so for if he a brother is as he was created there is no guilt in him no cloud of guilt has risen to obscure him and he stands revealed to everyone you meet because you see him through himself to be born again is to let the past go and look without condemnation upon the present the cloud that obscures God's son to you is the past and if you would have it past and gone you must not see it now if you see it now in your illusions it has not gone from you although it is not there time can release as well as in prison depending on whose interpretation of it you use so time so we think of linear time as past present and future and we think we're traveling through linear time but that's not true actually that's just the ego's experience and um there's only now and that's the only as i said that's the only time you can be in 
So the ego uses the past to project the future and cover all our brothers over. And we can use time to release. So we can use this present moment to look back at the past and have it released. So we can use this moment now to release something. So time has a use. It can be used by a guide, by ourselves joining our guide and release it. Or we can be in this moment imprisoned by the past. We're the only ones that gets imprisoned by the past. We're the only ones that have experienced the past. If someone's done a lot of forgiveness, they're freer than us. They've let go of their past. And they're just ahead of us saying, hey, I'll just let go of the past. I'm happy. <laughs> we say, no, no, I'm, I'm actually afraid of happiness and light. I'm afraid of, you know, all that joy you're having. I'm afraid of it. I'm just going to hang on to the darkness, the past. I'm just going to continue to tell the story about my past, about my unfairly treated childhood, about this, about that. I'm going to continue to live in a cloud of darkness. And that doesn't bring happiness. I mean, it's really, it's really clear to me when I was living in a cloud of darkness, um, I didn't know how to become free of it. And so coming to these teachings, all I did was do what he said. He said, you need to let go of the past, go back to it, I'll heal it for you, and then keep trying. And so I had to try to see the innocence in Christ, the guiltlessness in my brothers. It wasn't easy because the ego was constantly bringing in a judgment, <laughs> a new judgment. Right? So you are going to have these thoughts that are going to try to drag you back to judgment and comparison. Because remember, the ego goes from suspicious to vicious. So you need to be really vigilant. You need a, he says in the course, a little willingness at the start, but in the manual for teachers, he says you need an abundant willingness, right? So you do. You need all the willingness. You need to have, it's like a rocket taking off. You need that really big power within you to say, no, I'm not going back into the past I don't want it because I'm the one that gets to live in this hell I want to be free so Holy Spirit come in and take this away and show me my brother truly so this Christ blessing that I was given on my journey as I started to really do it I started to notice that my mind got clear really fast so this doesn't replace your work with the course and the course's teachings. This is just something that I was given. If you find it helpful, use it. If you find it not helpful, let it go. But find what works for you. We all have our own path. We all have things that work for us. Our guide is in charge. So I find it, found this helpful. I'll... I'll bring it in in certain, I'm just guided to bring it in in different ways for us for in these um, groups and for anyone that feels like, oh, I just want to go and have a look at Kate today and see what she's saying, right? <laughs> and that's fine. It, you know, some, some characters won't particularly like my message, but we're all, it, it, it doesn't matter. The Holy Spirit will find someone that they, they give permission to. We all have our part. It doesn't matter how many people listen to you or how many people you meet and express. It doesn't matter. It, he, it, it makes no difference. Numbers don't matter to the Holy Spirit. It has no idea. It's really just you just have to let go of how you're going to share this message, what you're going to say, who listens, who doesn't. It makes no difference. The most important thing for us is to to do this forgiveness to listen to these teachings and activate it you can listen and read till the cows come home but until you want to listen until you want to go back to the past say right i'm done with it okay i realized i'm drinking toxic thoughts 
I'm the one that feels really shit when I go back to the past. <laughs> really, it's it is. It's like that. You feel crap when you live in the past. You really do. Jesus doesn't want you to live there. So why are you hanging on to it? You're the only one that suffers from it. That's what I saw. I'm the only one that's suffering from this. Everyone else, everyone's awakening and having a good time. <laughs> I'm suffering. Right? right. Well, I'm going to let go of the past. So it just comes, you need to make a decision in your mind that, you know, perhaps I might be wrong. <laughs> it's sort of like funny how he says that in rules of decision. Oh, can you just think that perhaps you might be wrong? You know, Jesus is sitting there like you're completely wrong about your brother, but come on, I'll coax you with this little, perhaps I might be wrong. But there has to be a motivation because you have to see, you have to be really sick and tired of suffering. And, and, and this is the way, I mean, this is like, he's just saying, come on, guys, come on, don't imprison yourself. You don't need to be in hell. You know, just join me, let go of the past, forgive your brother, nothing's happened, it's just a silly dream where you've dreamt of separation, you're just in a little dream where you're dreaming you're a body and your brother's annoying you and judging and comparing, but there's nothing outside you. You start to notice it's all in your mind, all these thoughts are in your mind and nowhere else. So release, release your brother. <laughs> To be born again is to let the past go and look without condemnation upon the present. The cloud that obscures God's son to you is the past. And if you would have it past and gone, you must not see it now. If you see it now in your illusions, it has not gone from you, although it is not there. So the thing about the past is it's not here. So if you've been raped in the past, you're not being raped now, right? Okay. I mean, I've had um, sexual assaults in my um, life, dream life. <laughs> They're all forgiven. I, someone putting some body part on me, it cannot affect the Holy Son of God. I'm the Holy Son of God. I'm not affected by a body part being put on a bit of body part. I'm not my body. They're not their body. All right, so their body part rubbed or did something to this body part, but I'm not a body. So the the teachings of the course completely release it nothing nothing's happened nothing's harmed me who i am can't be threatened so the past is all gone it's cleared up and it's gone it's laughed at the holy son of god can't have any can't be threatened or harmed time can release as well as in prison depending on whose interpretation of it use so if I lived, I lived in the past of being unfairly treated by the sexual assaults, believing they were real and that I was a body and that this body did this to me, put this body part here and there. And, you know, you're not your vagina, you're not your penis, you're not your breasts. <laughs> it's just different parts of the body that are skin. It's no different to your hand or your, your hair. It's just we've all said, oh, this part, this part of the body is all special. I know this might really trigger some. People, but it's really helpful it's not it's all it's all just skin and it's a part of a body that you're not so if someone touches you on the shoulder you don't say get away no don't touch me well some might because they might not they might feel they're a body and they don't want to be touched but that's why I am not a body I am free I am as God created me is the teaching to free you because that's why you can't be threatened. So, so the Holy Spirit goes back to the past. He did that. I took, I went back to the past experiences where I'd had what the world would call being touched inappropriately, and one of them was quite a, a um, it was on the front page of the newspaper here in Melbourne. <laughs> they thought, um, where uh, I won't go into it. But it was a big story, right? There was a big story in the script. And he showed me nothing's happened. Nothing's nothing's happened. It's you're not a body. This is a dream. So we have to free ourselves of anything and bring the Holy Spirit with you and get him to look at it at the time that you think something happened. 
he can be, you can look at it above the battleground, you can look at what happened. So see the incident that you feel um, you were hurt or harmed or whatever, go back with the Holy Spirit of Jesus above the battleground and look at it and get him to show you it differently. He's going to give you a whole different perception of it and then it'll be completely relieved and let go of. Past, present and future are not continuous unless you force continuity on them. So we start to see that the past isn't here now, right? What happened yesterday isn't here. And the future's not here. There's no continuity of it. If you didn't bring the past in or worry about the future or think about something to come, there's, you will get, our mind will wake up to this that there's only now and if we don't bring anything from the past in it, there is no past and if we don't think about anything to do with our future there's no such thing as future they're only thoughts that we have right so we're always living in the present moment we're always in that that's where we live in the present moment and we seemingly go through linear time, but if without thoughts about the past and the future, there's no linear time. And if you're living in the present, where you connect with the Christ mind, you're outside time and space. Um, you can perceive them as continuous and make them so for you. So you, you can make them so for you if you're in that egoic mind, but do not be deceived and then believe that this is how it is. So it's not really like that. So we need to even say to the Holy Spirit, show me how there is no time. That's what I would say to the Holy Spirit. I'd say, show me how the past is gone. Show me how there is no time. Show me how it's always the present moment. I just used to ask the Holy Spirit to bring those experiences into me. He will, he'll show you everything. I said, show me how, what non-duality is. I don't understand what that means. Show me how, what it is. Give me the experience. Just bring something in to give, so I know what non-duality is. And I had a revelation experience a few days later. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Right. There's nothing. There's no... Um, you don't, don't, the Holy Spirit's only going to bring something in to be helpful to you, so don't be scared of it. For to believe reality is what you would have it be according to your use, for it is delusional. You would destroy time's continuity by breaking it into past, present and future for your own purposes. The purpose that we use for time, the ego, when he says you, he means the egoic mind that we live in without, if we're not in the Holy Spirit's mind, um, he means that we value the past. We think the ego says, oh, you need to know the past or you're going to be uh, subjected to something. So you need to rely on the past. In other words, you know, people are deceitful. People are, you need to know, you need to work out if someone's going to deceive you or attack you or sexually assault you or something. So that's what he's talking about here. That um, uh, you anticipate the future on the basis of your past experience and plan for it accordingly. See, so if I'm walking down a dark street and someone's jumped out and sexually assaulted me, I would plan, um, anticipate the future on the basis and plan for it accordingly. Start to see how everything, you know, we, we plan for this is so huge every part of your life with the ego when you're in the egoic mind it always plans for the future it's constantly keeping your the present moment full of the past and fear about the future and constantly trying to work out ways for you as a body to be safe it's crazy that we miss the present moment constantly we miss the present love and happiness because the ego is always trying to plan and it always uses the past and it's tiring 
and I started to notice on my journey, I just thought, oh, my God, I go to plan A, plan B, plan C, and then the ego goes, oh, they won't work, go back to plan A, maybe let's look at that. And I would spend hours and hours and hours trying to plan out something for myself with the ego. And I started to think to myself, all I do is end up in fear. The ego mind never brings me to a state of happiness with its plans. <laughs> it's, Jesus says it's got its own plan. I'm like, yeah, he's right. I'm, I'm always going to the ego saying, you know, how can I shore up that, you know, I won't be homeless or, you know, won't miss out on food or something in the future. And I started to think I've been going over these plans for my future every day for 20 or 30 years and not once have I ever felt secure. I've always felt anxious. That's why we can really look at our own, how we think with the ego and say, yeah, it is seek and do not find. I am seeking with the ego and I'm never finding a plan that says you'll be safe, right? So if we let go of the past and the future and come into the present moment and meet with the Holy Spirit and say, I let go of all planning, I let go of everything, all everything that I might need wherever I go and I let you be in charge of that and I don't plan for anything that's really where we want to be and then we start to see how all these gifts come in these little things that we didn't that our old planning wouldn't have realized <laughs> I started to have all these lovely things given to me gifted to me where I would never have thought and he was like, you need to trust. You need to really keep trusting. Don't go back to your old plans because when you plan with the ego, it it can't know. It, it's a thought system that never. It's it's um. It, it's it's like a a trickster. It's a the ego mind has no idea um how, how to. It just doesn't. It just doesn't know. It's like somebody asking somebody that doesn't know anything, and it's trying to guess. And when someone tries to guess, you know in your mind that there's no plan to keep you safe. So safety comes from knowing who you are. It it comes from knowing that I am this eternal spirit. I am in the mind of God. I am the love of God. It doesn't come from being a body. And then um, if you have some specific needs like housing and food and transport and anything like that, the Holy Spirit knows when you give your life over to the Holy Spirit and Jesus to be just to be the love in the world. Um, it just everything just falls into place. It's just things that you need are bought in when they're needed you just start to see it you don't plan for it and some things things you know things that you, you, many people have stories about just trusting so this is we have to let go of our how, how the ego plans we have to let go of this idea that i'm a body and let and hold that very lightly so as we um coming to coming to God um will you know your journey is your journey you'll sometimes have some fear come up about letting go of this idea that you're a body but, but what what really um comes in is you start to have an experience of being something other than a body you start to experience this this yourself as something else so how are we going for time? Maybe I'm feeling um, oh, like my phone's off. So I'm just going to get the time on my computer. Okay, so we'll do a little meditation now. I'm just going to mark where I got up to with this.
section. I'm not sure that I'll do another talk on this. I'm just I'll just ask the guidance on that. Um, I'll just read this one little bit. The miracle enables you to see your brother without his past and so perceive him as born again. His errors are all past and by perceiving him without them, you are releasing him. And since his past is yours, you share in this release. Let no dark cloud out of your past obscure him from you, for truth lies only in the present, and you will find it if you seek it there. You have looked for it where it is not, and therefore have not found it. Learn then to seek it where it is, and it will dawn on your eyes that see your past was made in anger and if you use it to attack the present you will not see the freedom that the present holds so i'm just going to do a a short um christ blessing meditation that's sort of based on this as well so If we can just close our eyes. Now, this might challenge you, <laughs> what we're going to do today. But let's just say a little prayer. I'm willing to release the past. Jesus is telling me that this is the way I can become free. I let go of what I think and let him be my teacher. I want peace. I want to be happy. He's telling me that I need to let go of the past that I have about my brother and come to see his innocence and sinlessness. And in this way, I release him and myself. So I am willing to do this today to give this gift to myself and then to be used by the Holy Spirit to share this gift that I was changed. My mind was changed by doing this and this is the way to freedom. So I can demonstrate why, you, why others would want to do this. I let go a fear of the light. I see there's nothing there's nothing to be sacrificed by living in the light of love. And I trust the Holy Spirit and Jesus. I trust their teachings and I look at others that have gone before me that have had that radiant smile as they have let go of their past. And I say, okay, there is evidence that I can live in the present moment in the happiness by doing this, by letting go of the past. I'm willing to let go of the past. So now if you just close your eyes and quieten your mind. Now, I want you to picture your father's, your dad, your dad's face in front of you, in front of you, and see his face. I am willing to let go of the past. Look into his eyes. And just say these words as I say them. Remember this is a gift to myself.
Hold his face in your mind. If his face disappears, bring it back in. I love you. I bless you. And I honour you. You are my dear holy brother. One with me. Not as a body. But in the love of God. You are with me in God's mind. You are innocent. You are guiltless. You are sinless. You are perfect. You are whole. You are complete. I release the past and come to know you now. I only want to see your innocence. And that way we both get to have the innocence. Amen. Now keeping his face in your mind, I want you to hear his words to you. So see his face and see his mouth speaking these words to you and hear these words that he's saying to you. Try to keep the image of his face in your mind Try to look at his, keep looking in his eyes. If any resistance comes up, just keep going back to it. Just keep doing it. Hold his face, look into his eyes and hear him say, I love you. I bless you. I honour you. You are my holy brother. You are guiltless. You are innocent. You are sinless. You are perfect. You are whole. You are complete. We are one. One love. Amen. Now we're going to bring our mother's face into our mind. Going to bless her with our holiness. I am willing to let go of the past. I want to do this. I want to let go of all the past and come into the present joy. I want to be free of all stories. See your mother's face. Let go of the past. See her afresh. Look into her eyes. And say, I love you. I bless you. And I honour you. 
as the holy child of God. You are innocent. You are guiltless. You are sinless. You are the pristine purity of Christ. You are the loveliness of his love. I see only your perfection. I join you in this beautiful love of God that we, love, we are in, that we live in. Amen. Now, we will have our mother bless us. I'll let go of the past. I'm willing to let go. This is a gift to me. See so your mother's face. I want you to hear these words coming from her to you. Hold her gaze. I love you. I bless you. And I honor you. You are my holy brother, one with me. You are innocent. You are guiltless. You are sinless. You are pure. You are perfect. You are whole. You are complete. I see only your holiness. I see your true self. I see your purity. Amen. So, I'm going to turn the zoom off a minute, but I'm not going to speak too much. So, between now and when you go to bed, uh, try not to enter into any, to any conversation or listen to anything. Really try to hold this. And let this, letting go of the past and coming into the pure presence, let it, let it take itself. Let it marinate in your mind. Try to sit quietly, if you like, for another half an hour, an hour, without speaking. Let the Holy Spirit work with you, your mind, whatever needs to be healed. So just keep your eyes closed. You don't even have to look as I say goodbye to stay there. I love you all. See you next week. Thank you.